I remember being a kid. I can see that happening. That's oh, oh. always something to do. The Unlaced. Unlaced podcast. It's actually not bad. <laughs> and we're live. This is exciting again. Morgan Mitchell in the studio. We meet again. Yes, I'm back. You're, How are we going? I'm good. How are you, more importantly? <laughs> I said before, I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look it, but like I had presumed you might have come off a big night being your birthday yesterday, so happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Nah, um, I, all I had was Mexican and goji with my best mates, and then I was just like, look, I'm going to bed. I already yeah. had my fun back in Queensland. So <laughs> 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 this is recovery. <laughs> have you, um, you know, the last time we had you on the show, which for all the listeners will remember we had Morgan on very early, and I think you were in like a hotel in, was it in Colorado? It was in Denver. Oh my God, was it? That was literally a year ago. Yeah, it was, yeah, it would have been yeah, this time a year ago. Yeah, yeah, because I was in America last year for my And birthday. the Wi-Fi was a fucking atrocious, yeah, so, so it bad. just kept losing yeah, each other. Shit. Yeah, shit, I was like in the sticks. Yeah, 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 I don't know where you were, but I'm pretty sure you were there. Yeah, Colorado, you're right. Far out. Oh my God, I was in the worst, yeah. It was <laughs> in the worst place. Um, how have you, how have you been since you've come back to Australia? You spent a bit of time in Queensland? Yeah, yeah. Um, Queensland's in Australia. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Queensland? <laughs> just in general. Yeah, general, because um, cool, you've just come back to Melbourne as of, what, a few days ago? Yeah, yeah. three days ago. Um, no, I'm good, to be honest. Like like I said before, I can't complain because I've pretty much escaped almost every lockdown except for when I got caught up in Sydney. Mm. Um, so to finally be home and slowing down for a bit, I'm actually enjoying it. I just also don't know how <laughs> everyone has done it for it's, this long. It's crazy. I'm yeah. Kind of bored now. <laughs> you're losing your mind three <laughs> yeah, days in. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's, yeah, it's been like really hard. Like yeah. I, I think everyone's at a breaking point now. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like things have to open up. Like is your experiences living. traveling will actually be interesting. Your experiences traveling the world with what you've been doing the last year. Has it been very different elsewhere? Like, oh yeah. A hundred percent. The sentiment around COVID and stuff. Yeah. I mean, America's completely different to us, right? Like it yeah. doesn't really even exist over there in their minds. Do they have to get the vaccine and stuff over there? Is that like um, a mandate like it is here? I don't think some places are trying to make it a thing, but uh, to be honest, I haven't taken any note of it because when I was there last, the vaccine hadn't come in. Um, but now a lot of them are getting vaxxed just because they want to, you know, resume yeah. life. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just like pro do whatever you want because yeah, me too. Human so rights. Much, yeah, <laughs> so much information, <laughs> yeah. experts, this, that, the other. I'm just like, whatever, you know, there's so much going on in life that I just, I don't have the energy to care anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah. But no, everything's good down my end. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, honestly, I think I just said this to you, but like Morgan Mitchell's life fucking astonishes me. <laughs> I'm just going to say that now. Like seriously, <laughs> I actually think like I had this kind of, I was, we're doing a vlog today, people, which hopefully we'll bring out and it'll be cool. But I mentioned at the start of it, but like your life is like a movie. <laughs> it is like a fucking movie, man. I'm not going to lie. Like you've got, you travel everywhere. You've been to the Olympics. You've got brand deals like. You're kind of killing life in some regards. Like you'd, you'd, you'd have to say that, but do you have like, is this normal for you? Are you feeling like kind of on top of the world? Like you can do anything? Like what the fuck? It's pretty funny. Like I try telling people this and it's like, no one listens. Cause I do wonder like, how do you do it? How do you keep going? But for me, it's like, I get that I'm a runner and I get that it's set me up for this life. But I get so bored easily. I think it's undiagnosed ADD, <laughs> self-diagnosed ADD. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. need to be doing something. All the time. Yeah. And for me, it's like I've connected with so many people along the way. I think that's how the opportunities came. And yeah, I'm on top of the world. It's like, you know, I, I, I reflect on this year. And I'm thinking, okay, the Olympics didn't go how I wanted them to go. But everything else I got to experience trumps that one bad performance. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, it's like I'm 27 now, nearing the end of my career, kind of. So of course I want to make these connections and I want to sign these deals because once I retire, I want something else to do post track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, super grateful, super lucky. I, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I think I'm just like, do you pinch yourself at times? Some of the things you're doing, like when you realize like that, like some of, like, cause we go into detail of some of the specifics, but the magnitude of what you're doing it at is like, there's a huge audience to yeah. some of these connections and partnerships as well. Yeah. Kind of. I or mean, do you just not really look at it that way? You just kind of I just keep going it. with it, really. Yeah. Like, it's funny. I have this, like, journal. It's, I call it a dream journal. It's a bit lame. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. Okay. <laughs> we've established that earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I just keep writing down what I want to do. And it's funny, like, it's all pretty much coming true. That's the thing that scares really? me ever since 2016. Or even just before that. Everything I have in this journal, I'm like, tick, 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 tick. No way. But I'm also just like, a lot of people are too scared to try new things where I'm like, well, 
Are we allowed to swear? Yeah. Well, have um, you yeah, not yeah, heard yeah, me yeah, the first time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly, I'm just kind of like, fuck it. Let's just try it. Because yeah, if yeah. it doesn't work, I'll try something else. And if that doesn't work, I'll just try something else. Like, So are you like a belie- uh, big believer in like manifestation? 100%. Do you do that yeah. with everything you do in life, not just athletics? Well, I didn't win the Olympics, so no. <laughs> but is that, so yeah, but like, I'm, I tried give and that take. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That contradicts what you just said. But, yeah. <laughs> but no. so like, have, how long have you been doing that for? Mm. Like your whole sort of career, like from, you know, a young oh. age? Because I actually, I'm very similar with that. I maybe don't write it down, but like I yeah. try and speak things. Into existence? Yeah. Yeah, correct. yeah. I would say probably since 2015. I remember I, sp- I parted ways with my old coach, moved to my new one, and it started with, okay, I want to go to the Olympics. And mm. every night I just like would write it down. I'd meditate. I said I wanted to finish that season undefeated and all of that started to happen. Wow. And then that's when I was like, all right, cool. I want to be in vogue. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. And it just kept happening. That's crazy. <laughs> you wrote you want to be in vogue. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Shoot for the stars, people. <laughs> yeah. watch all the listeners now are going to get the, this dream journal and just start writing <laughs> the most ridiculous shit. <laughs> Why not though? Like 100%, seriously. Yeah. Um, I want to obviously go into a bit of the recent past with you, but before I do that, kind of probably the last time we spoke, like I want to go back to kind of pre-Olympics, mm-hmm. um, which was the last time we spoke. And, and at that time you made, I don't know how big this decision is from like an athletics terms, cause you're closer to it, but moving from the 400 to the 800, yeah. like, is that a huge decision? Is that like a drastic change? I mean, I know it's one lap extra, but like yeah. if anyone tries to sprint a 400, like, yeah, you, you know, know what I mean? Hard. You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> but so is that like a really big move for you? Was that a big change? Yeah. I, I, I've always tried to compare it, but it's very hard to compare to a different sport. It'd just honestly be like picking up a completely new skill and then having to get 20 times fitter. Wow. So, and, and not only that, it's also like, in my head, I thought, yeah, I want to make the Olympics for the 800, but fuck. I, it's easy to change events, but trying to do that on the world stage with the best in the world. Yeah. It's, it's... I was just like to my coach, this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but let's yeah. fucking do it. And then we did. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So like was, cause like how, how was the preparation overall for that? Because mm. I assume that must've challenged you mentally and physically and, and almost like the perception of you is like, you've been an elite athlete your whole life. Yeah. So you're going to be judged on that performance in that same yeah. light as that 400 meter runner, yeah. but it's not the same, is it? In so a sense. different. Like when I first started at the end of 2018, when I first started the transition, I reckon between August 2018 and Feb 2019, hardest period of my life, just really? trying to get fit. I couldn't run 6k without stopping. Oh. Like that's, and now I can run 18k on a Sunday. That was the long run. Yeah. And that's when I realized like, fuck, this is no joke. Like this event is so much harder than the 400. Um, and then, yeah, it, it sucked. Cause at the start of this year, we had the same goals. Like we killed it in 2019. I was so happy with everything. And then I got injured and I was like, <laughs> new event, torn Achilles, or partially torn Achilles. And I'm trying to make an Olympic team for something I've never done before. Pretty much. So wait, you tore your Achilles before you went. Yeah, par- oh, partial tear. So it was like, I think it was like eight And you still ran? Yeah. Like, so were you running injured? Like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> just to be straight, just straight yeah, up? Oh, yeah. really? So I, um, in pain or just like you were just felt limited in a sense? A bit of both. Like when I first did it, I took three months off of basically no running, just gym and rehab and um, cross training. Then we came back, started racing again, and I was pretty much close to pain free. And then we just overdid it and it came back and I flared up. Couldn't, couldn't I don't think I trained for a week. Um, straight after my last race before the Olympics. And then we only had four weeks to try and get ready, um, which obviously reflects on how I ran. Did, did, was, that, was that a known thing though? No, I didn't want to tell anyone because I think, I don't know, for me it was like if it becomes everyone's business, then they're just always going to be checking in on me or they're going to be spreading rumours about it or they're going to be judging my coach and her programming. When at the end of the day, it's because I changed spikes and then raced and raced crap because the spikes weren't broken into and I hurt myself. Like that's, I just didn't want to make it anyone's business because I felt like that would add more pressure. Yeah. And then, yeah, I crossed the line and I thought, oh, what's done is done. We've just now got to look forward, rehab and get better for next year. Wow. That's crazy. So like an event you waited five years for. Yeah. In a sense, six months. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. But I still made it. I was pretty happy. Yeah. Well, considering what you told me (laughs) that, well, how, like you kind of did summarize then, but like, how do you summarize the Olympics for you? Like. You seem somewhat disappointed, mm. but when you put it in the context of changing events and having like a partially torn Achilles, like yeah. somewhat, that must be pretty good. It, I was, I was pretty shattered, but at the same time, 
I think I needed that. Like, you know, it, it taught me so much about vulnerability. Like doing that on the world stage is pretty embarrassing. But for like going through that, I think I'll be a lot better for it. Yeah. Um, and it made me reflect like maybe I did get the balance wrong between training, racing and competing, um, like trying to qualify for the team and then all of the commercial stuff that I had on the side as well, like flying back and forth from Sydney. I think that made me realise, all right, what do I want more or can I make both work or do I have to give one up? And me being me, I'm like, no, nah, we're doing it both. We can make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go for it. Yeah, okay. Um. So, yeah, but... At the end of the day, the Olympics was awesome. They made it feel like, yes, there's still COVID, but please just go and enjoy yourself. Meet all your friends, meet new people, blah, 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 blah. So for me, that side of it was just like 10 out of 10. That was so good. It was oh. exactly like Rio. Because that's what I wanted yeah. to ask about. Like the outside of the Olympics or outside of the track, there's the Olympic experience. Which yeah. Everyone talks about as like the greatest yeah. thing ever, the Olympic it's village so and so sick. forth. Was Yeah, I was going to say, was it different with COVID? Was the interactions different? Could you socialize as much as... I guess you normally would maybe at Rio or mm, London or the previous Olympics. Kind of. I've got to think about how I word this because I'm already in a little bit of hot water with <laughs> the Olympic team. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's just say different countries had different rules. Okay. Ours were just a lot more strict. Okay, right. Which is, fa which is fine. I totally understand that. Um, but at the, end, at the end of the day, I still got to hang out with my friends. We could meet everyone in the food hall and all that stuff. So the experience was awesome considering. Like you got to think biggest sporting event in the world and we're lucky enough just to be there whilst everyone else was still locked down yeah, so we crazy. can't we can't be too mad you know what I mean yeah um so that's the way I try to look at it and then I just forget about the running part yeah okay <laughs> did were you able to like get around Tokyo at all like no. it, nothing at all no could not it's leave like the most beautiful place as well I know I know and it, but torture. it rained almost every day it was yeah. overcast so it was kind of like I've been there before, thank God. But if you haven't been to Tokyo and that was your first time. <laughs> <laughs> That's got oh it. God, yeah. Absolutely got it. <laughs> you are missing out. Because <laughs> maybe you don't know what you're missing out on. But oh, yeah, that would lot. suck. <laughs> yeah. That would suck. Yeah, I feel like with you, you've always had to deal with external pressure and you've always had eyes on you as like a, a young kid and particularly how good you've been at your events. Like, do you kind of give that any sort of interest or do you listen to that or look at that or do you really just kind of tune out like particularly when you're at the Olympics do you just try and block everything out and like take time off social media or are you mm -hmm. kind of just like no whatever it is it is and I'm just gonna go yeah I used to get sucked into it I think I think we all do like, I feel like at the Olympics uh, if I'm not like when you're not in the sort of the constant media all the time yeah. I feel like I would tune in as an athlete I'd be like Fuck, I want to see what, what's going on you know yeah. what I mean because it's like a hyper yeah. Hyper event, that's just everything's on me, you know? Yeah. No, with the media, I, I rejected a lot of interviews and podcasts leading into it. Um, and then I still, I think because I had all of my commercial commitments and I knew they'd be watching and I was pretty nervous about that because I didn't even tell them that I was injured. Mm. But um, even with like the positive and negative stuff, I'd still, everyone goes on social media. Like I couldn't mm. just cut it out because that would just be unnatural for me. But I'd see stuff and I, it was just like nothing. I didn't really care about what people said. I think yeah. that just comes with maturity because old Morgan would have just crawled into a hole and died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas now I'm just like, I'm at the Olympics. These people aren't. Yeah. That's I mean, cool. when you think of it, think of it like that. And then if you're an athlete at the Olympics, judging other athletes, you're not a true, to me, it's like not so much a true athlete. You're just not, you just don't get it because we're all there. We've all gone through hardship in some way, shape or form in the past mm. few years. So who are you to judge the next person, whether they're competing well or not, or, you know, going through their own mental health issues, physical health issues, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I just kind of just kept on my course and I was like, I've still got my mom, my family love me, my friends love me. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Do you, I assume you'd lean in on them as well through all those moments oh, too. And yeah. they like, helps you get through. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just, they're like, gentle reminders they just tell you who they're the same like who really cares do you even know that shit. person yeah, like, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> like, oh man <laughs> you know what I mean yeah I feel you so so, so post Tokyo I guess you've been just resting up and relaxing yeah, and yeah. trying to get your ankle or your Achilles right Achilles yeah. is like the probably one of the worst injuries to kind of come across right yeah one of the girls actually um ruptured hers in yeah. the race and oh I, god yeah yeah did Jen you hear it? no i was just watching on tv and you oh. saw her collapse oh. and you could just tell she looked back and it was like that's your achilles oh, no. so for me it was like oh i'm injured but that didn't happen so yeah, i can't cause be when mad they, they look back they think it was like a bang yeah yeah, yeah, that, yeah. someone like they're... has like pretty much corkied them but no it's your achilles <laughs> shooting Jesus. up the back of your leg um so yeah i took the time off and I remember thinking, for me, it just felt like a massive weight was lifted. Mm. Um, just trying to qualify and the, 
the, the amount of pressure and shit that was put on me just to try and make that team. It's really hard to qualify, let alone <gasps> perform at the Olympics, yeah, right? I can imagine. Like, people so, don't give that enough credit. No, especially in, this in country. track and field. Like, yeah, yeah. I just don't think people understand that sport. Like, it's not just running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just like, it's, yeah, I think that's why I love it though. It is quite incredible. But, um, yeah, as soon as I crossed that line, I thought, sweet, I'm Morgan. I'm not yeah, an athlete yeah, anymore. Yeah, like, fun. no one fucking talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Like, I didn't even watch the rest of the Olympics, really. Yeah, I probably, yeah. I can understand why as well. Yeah. You'd want a break. You've been yeah. so consumed training for oh, it for so just long. Just like hearing about it. But I did watch, I did want to watch the semi and the final mm. just to kind of like remind me, like, this is what you wanted to do. This is who you want to that's be. Good. It still burned, but a few of my friends ran well. One of them medaled. I was so happy. But um, as soon as that final was done, I thought, okay, cool. It's just time to go and live my life. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. done a lot of living in the last <laughs> six to eight weeks. <laughs> Had my first gym session back today. And I'm, I'm just glad I gave myself that time. I'm not in any rush. Yeah, of course. Got back to the gym and I thought, oh, this is exactly what I wanted to feel. Not like it was a hard slog. Like I actually want to be here working hard. Yeah. Um, and that's the first time I've felt that in so long coming back from – a season of, you know, did racing. you like, as soon as that Olympics finished, were you at a point where you're like, you don't even want to think ahead or were you already kind of thinking like, you want to come back, you want to be at the next Olympics, you want to keep fighting? Um, it's funny. I, I was thinking, yeah, I'll go to Paris, but that was just kind of like, okay, you know, yeah, this is the it. course I'm on, like Paris is ages away. Why am I going to stress now? Correct. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was like, all right, I don't even want to think about getting my Achilles right. I just want to be Morgan. Mm. And so it wasn't until four weeks after I got back out of quarantine, then I was like, all right, PRP injection in the Achilles, I'll start rehab now. Mm. So I'm just taking it, I'm seriously just taking it day by day. That's like, awesome. I remember Rio, I was mentally cooked for at least three months and I just didn't want to go through that again Yeah. because it's such like an emotional high. And once you've like, you know, hit that goal that you've had ever since you were six, I was just like, well, what now? Yeah. Like, what the f like, yeah, I, that's, that's how I, I don't understand. Like, did we talk about this a lot on this show with like people coming into retirement and stuff? Like, how do you replicate yeah. running at an Olympics yeah. to anything else in life? But that's the thing. I think I finally realized you need stuff off the track or off the court or off the field. Correct. And that's why I was able to just transition even after I got injured. I'm like, well, I've got X, Y, and Z to focus on as well. And I love them just as much as going to the Olympics. Yeah. And I know people might hate me for saying that, but like I, the goals I had this year were just we're on the same level yeah. as making an Olympic final or for qualifying That's or whatever awesome. have you. Um, and I just wanted people to be okay with that. Like I love the modeling. I love the designing, like the collection that just came out yeah. to me was my Olympic final. Like yeah. that was the greatest wow. thing ever. People are like, oh my God, but it's the Olympics. Oh, well, fuck it. I'm allowed yeah. to. <laughs> That's like, crazy. I'm not just an athlete. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you this know what is it's a, like. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> like you get treated like you're just brand. It's like you can't be good in anything else. And if yeah. you are, it's like, oh, they're not focused on their yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah, It's like, yeah. Well, well, no, this is actually helping the yeah. sport. Because otherwise if I sit there and think about it 24-7, I'll fucking explode. Especially, and you wonder why when people retire, a lot of them go downhill is because they've had that forced on them. Correct. And that's what I just don't want. But this, this is why, like I say, your life is like a movie. Like, <laughs> uh, because before we go into some of the stuff you're doing and the, the brands and the, and all the sort of creative things that you do, like, is there an element of your personality or like, is there like a business focus behind, you know, the, the face of Morgan that's actively searching for this and like marketing and not marketing, sorry, like engaging with people, mm. always looking for these active interests or are they kind of like coming to you in a way? Like, uh, ooh, I think a bit of both to be honest, cause like I said, I just need to always be doing something. And which you are though. And it's not like, it's actually yeah. quite hard to do that. Like I yeah, feel, I'm so do you know what I mean? Like, so you like must be doing it really well to always <laughs> fill time. Yeah, I think so. I just, I don't know. I'm good at scheduling finally. Um, but for me, I just, I don't know. I've always thought these are my interests and how can I kind of make that, how can I put that on the same pedestal as the Olympics? So for me, it's like designing. I'd love to, you know, get into a fashion week one day or collaborate mm. with some of the biggest names in the fashion industry. And so then I have to put my business hat on like, okay, how can I do that? Well, I've got connections with photographers. I love shopping for high-end clothes. Let's do some photo shoots so people know that, you know, I do love fashion. I have style, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then that's how they notice you and then they want to invite you in. Right. So there's well. always like st strategy, strategy behind yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. And um, I don't know. That's just, I, I know people say I'm lucky, but it's like, I just, yeah, but I you know, create I just that. love, like yeah. You, you put yourself out there to find that. I it's think. honestly just stuff I want to do, so I go for it. Like, it's not really that. 
I mean, it's tough. Like, I don't think people realise this is something I've been doing since 2014. Like, I've yeah. only just cracked through. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's like... Like, when you say that, though, like, what, what, what sort of things would you have been putting in place since 2014? Like, all this sort of strategic thinking about what you're posting on social media. Yeah. The activity you're doing, stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like, you do a lot of stuff for free at the start. That's one of the big things uh. to, like, kind of have... You've got to gain the trust, I think. And people need to believe in you and you they want you to believe in their product. And I was like, well, I don't want money. I genuinely love your, I don't know, protein powder, face moisturizer, gotcha. whatever. Okay. Three years on, they're like, far out. This girl's now going to the Olympics and she did us a service. So why don't we give her some money for... Ah, uh, bingo. Yeah. And then it's like, all right. Comes now she's older. Circle. Now she needs a job. She's super nice. She does this. She does that for her community. And all of those things come together. It's not fake. Like, it's genuine. But it's just nice to see that you give some, you get some, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know... You take, you give, whatever that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Think that's you know what I mean? Yeah, that might not be from the quote book. <laughs> yeah, but... no, it's definitely not. Came um, up with that myself. Yeah. Quote of the day, Morgan Mitchell, everyone. Um, yeah, just funny, funny fact, everyone. Our producer, Pete, called Morgan Jane just before we started. And I could not think of a person that doesn't look anything like a Jane in my life. But anyway, that's a side note. But on the, um, like the brands you're ambassadors of, mm -hmm. like how many are there right now? Like. I think in your Instagram bio, you have like four. Something like that. Is, yeah. that. is that, but like, it's pretty crazy as well because one of the, one of the ones to me, just like, I'm absolutely mind boggled by is the face, like being a face of their 45. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what the fuck? Right and, now. and is that like a, is that like a global kind of relationship? Yeah. So it's a global deal. Like um, how many, like how many people are in that sort of similar thing? Cause I feel like there's only like a couple that are. On mm. that sort of status that you are for the brand. Well, it's, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing on my behalf because I feel like such a pleb. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the original face, Corey G. Yes. Um, so he's in all the studios. He's everywhere. He's amazing. Yeah. And then Mark Wahlberg um, and David Beckham. <laughs> and then little old me. <laughs> Well, I would say it was, it was, it was Corey G. <laughs> oh, Corey. No, so he's like the face of F45. So he's, he's been the there from like original kind uh, of guy. No, so there was Dan Con, and then once he left, they I think Corey's had it for maybe three or four years now, three okay. years. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, so Mark Wahlberg jumped on board and then they just recently signed David Beckham. But correct me if I'm wrong, they, they signed you before David Beckham, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not bad. I'm the reason he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's, to me, I'm like, fuck, that's pretty cool, like... I think that's when I forget to know my worth because I saw them sign Dave and I'm like, nah, I, I just kind of. You yeah, see, that's when I'm, that's when like, I talk holy... about the pinching yourself moments. Yeah. I'm like, this is the same, you're on the same platform as these people. Yeah. And I start to think, am I like, am I good enough for this role? Like you guys can choose Naomi Osaka. I wouldn't be offended. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like so, shit, it's yeah, all good. Like, I, I'm, okay, I'm okay. I'm fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's David Beckham. Yeah. But that's... between us, zero gold medals. So. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> we're all lacking. And Mark Orberg as well. I'll throw <laughs> yeah. him in there too. We don't have anything. <laughs> but so like how, if you don't mind me asking, like how did that come about? Like, how have you got in, into ah. that position? Has someone called you, like, you put yourself in that position? Because that's... Yeah, pretty funny, actually. One of my best friends in America, I wanted to hang out with her. We were meant to go out one weekend to Soho. And um, she was like, no, 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 I have this casting. I'm like, oh, you're getting into acting. What's it for? She was like, oh, F45. I said, oh, I've been to a few classes with my sister, Brittany. She loves it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what do you, like, I'm like, what do you mean? You're <laughs> like, they don't, it's yeah. a gym. Yeah, like, yeah, correct, right. And she goes, no, 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 I'm trying to be the, one of the, um, what do you call it, like, ambassadors for them. I thought, oh, sweet. Like, she's a tra an ex-track athlete. She's, she represented Canada. And then um, picked her up. We went out to lunch. She's like, you know what? I'm going to tell them about you. And then I had um, one of the guys, the marketing guys, call me. <clears throat> and he was like, we want to hook up an interview, come in, do the casting. And I didn't know what it was about because I wasn't getting enough info. Yeah. And I was like, look, I can speak in front of a camera. I can work out. I know I'm fit. Either you want me or you don't. I just don't have time. Yeah. And then, yeah, we had a Zoom call it, when I was in Chicago before coming home. And they're like, you've got the job. I was like, oh, I'll call my manager. I'm like, I think I got the job. Wow. That was a bold <laughs> strategy by you, by the way. Of like, look, I don't yeah. have the time. <laughs> They've got what, that could have been the biggest missed opportunity of my life. I wow. Yeah. Actually, there was another one, but that would have been... The second biggest missed opportunity. So it happened that, so what, just like, if this could be funny or not, but did your friend miss out because she's put you forward as well? Is that? Yeah, I felt, <laughs> she didn't care. She's so chill. Or I was going to say, like, did she realise what she was putting herself up against <laughs> there? Like, yeah. 
<laughs> she's, she's honestly one of the coolest girls. She was so happy for me, which I really appreciated. Because oh. I was kind of like, oh, I've, I've got the job. Yeah, yeah, shit. But at least I'll be in America. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Can I stay with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I appreciate her. And like anytime I am in America and we have parties or, you know, whatever, mm. she's always my number one. I'm like, you're my date. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just so feel like really I owe close. that to her. You know what I mean? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So what is the what is the role or the ambassadorship like entail for you? Yeah, so I have to, um, you know, visit as many studios as I can, connect with all the owners, the trainers, yeah. the um, athletes, the people, everyone. Yeah. And then I also have to go into the studio and do all of the workouts, the so ones that show up the, on, on the, the TV. F45 TV. So yeah. are you, you're, I assume you're on all the F45s in Australia, but like are you yeah. on all the TVs around the world yeah. for this? Yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, that is scary, just yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, like I have people tag me in them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in India, I'm in Russia, I'm in like Poland. Like for me, when I saw, I think, yeah, the... Polish F45 in Krakow, I think. Is it Krakow? How do you say Oh, uh, yeah, Krakow. Krakow, Krakow yep, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I was just like, what the fuck? Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Like, oh, my <laughs> Holy shit. Like, oh, we love you. I'm like, I love you too. <laughs> Come over, we can have pierogi. <laughs> 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 we can do it all. So are you, is there going to be like providing we get back to some normality? And I know you've got traveling coming up soon, but is there a requirement to go traveling around the world and go to these studios or is that kind of yeah, potentials? So that's, yeah, that's what I'm doing in America. Oh, wow. And then I think once obviously things open up, hopefully Corey and I can visit a few Expand. studios elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's good because for me and for them, it actually works well when I'm in Europe racing. I can visit as many as I want in Europe. And then I'm back in Oz, you know, we have races all over Oz. So I'll try and pop into as many studios as I can interstate. And I think that's the part I love is like, I jump into a studio and they just make you feel like a normal person. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, we get you're an Olympian, but let's work out. And I work out with some people and I'm like, fuck. I was like, here, take my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some some people are fitter. So, yeah, some are just incredible. It's hard workouts. So it's like oh, those high intense. intensive workou workouts can catch anyone. Yeah, like yeah, like, yeah, 100%. I think that's why I love it because right now, being in off season, I want to stay fit. So I'll just jump into perfect. two to three sessions a week. Yeah. And that's me done. You perfect. know what I mean? So yeah, it was at the start, I was a bit nervous about the partnership, but now I'm like, yeah, this is where I want to be. And it's what I want to do for sure. Crazy. I've seen you have some like social media engagement with the Corey G guy, but like, have you had any like interactions with Mark Wahlberg, David Beckham? Like, has that happened yet? Not yet. I'm hoping when I go to America. Oh my God. I'll, I'd probably cry. <laughs> no, I feel like I would cry yeah. from afar. But it's funny because people are like, David Beckham. I'm like, no, I want to meet his wife. And yeah. just spend oh my a day God. in so her studio. Have, have you journaled that down? No, I will when yeah. I get home. <laughs> I've thought about it. Yeah. Like how cool would it be to have coffee or tea or whatever she wants with Victoria Beckham wow. and just talk about her next range, show her my line. And then we can just kind of hopefully collaborate. I'm like, oh, wow. David, you're cool, whatever. And <laughs> I need your wife. You watch in probably I like just, a year or two, we're going to clip that I little would, section oh. and just blow <laughs> that up. They're like, hey, talk about manifestation, <laughs> hey. Yeah. And then once my Achilles is better, Wahlberg, I heard, can play basketball. Ah, really? I just feel like I can beat him. Well, you That's got, all you, I want. Would you have him on height? Is he that? I don't know if he's. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, if he's buff, he'd probably beat the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think you might have him on height. Yeah, I'll say we're the same height. I'm pretty tall, though. I'll give it to him. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, no, I'm yeah. a taller girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you, you, you've talked a, a lot about like design and creativity. Like, is that something that's come since you've started, I guess, engaging with more brands? Or have you always been sort of very into like the creativity behind fashion and, and modeling and things like that? Um, I've always been into it for sure. I think it's, it all just stemmed from online shopping. Really? I'm a Libra. Okay. <laughs> Materialistic. Yes. Yes. Um, and yeah, I think my mum, she was so into it. She's very artistic. She's very like cool and edgy. And I think I just got it from her because I've always looked up to her and I've always loved her fashion. And so that's just been a big part of our family. And then my cousin, she's a designer as well. And she's like the funkiest person I reckon I've ever come across. It's my mum's um, niece. And so, yeah, I'm just like, I think it's just always been a part of me. Yeah. And then I finally found a course that I wanted to study that would allow me to further that. Um, and so, yeah, we just kept rolling with it. And then I got those like jobs, you know, with Vogue or working with my photographer friend, Liz Sunshine and Fendi. And that's when I'm like, holy fuck. Like I just knew this is something I wanted to do. And like, it, I'd love it so much. Can you explain to me the Vogue like engagement? Like that's... Yeah. Is that, that's like holy grail of like the fashion industry in some yeah. regards, isn't it? Like It's pretty embarrassing because I haven't been on the cover. So I'm just talking about like a like, little feature. Yeah, well, the, but it's still, that's like pretty big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There's one more feature than me. <laughs> <laughs> it actually started in 2016. They had the, um, 
uh, Olympian issue, and so I was selected for that. Yeah. And I remember I got to wear Yeezy for it, and then we'll, oh. I just talked to the stylist. I'm like, I love Yeezy, I love this, I love that, like, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, fuck. Two years later, they're like, hey, 2018, we actually just want you in the magazine, not for sport. Like, we just want to feature wow. you. And, oh, my God, I got to wear, you know, like, Gucci and all those high-end brands, and I was just like, this is where I want to be, uh -huh. but I actually enjoy the styling side. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say, because yeah. I, I didn't know that until today, until you said that. Yeah, I always thought yeah, it was yeah. more like the you're on the front end of the, the sort of product, not behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Like, the modeling is cool, but it takes me a good half an hour to get warmed up. I'm not really, I get, yeah. I'm actually quite camera shy. Yeah. And then once they make you feel like, you know, it's all chill, you're part, you're part of it, yeah. But I'm just like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, why don't we style it like this? Why don't we do this? Like, oh, this is where really I want to cool. be. Does that catch um, them by surprise? Because they <laughs> probably just think you're like, this girl, like, yeah. she picked a track. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, just give me a chance. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's funny because some of them are pleasantly surprised and it's cool because you get to collaborate with them. The stylists are always the coolest people and they're so chilled because they've dealt with hell before. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas I'm just like, I can put my own shoes on. I'm not, you know, yeah. God gave me hands for a reason. Like, <laughs> just give me an outfit. Yeah. D just don't touch me. It's okay. Go have a coffee. Like, oh, wow. Do. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, actually appreciate that. Yeah. So for those that follow you, um, particularly the past week, like you would have seen Morgan's Instagram and socials blowing up with one of her, I guess, brands that you're an ambassador of or involved with, the Team Jagged. Yeah. Um, and that collection, like. Do you think, did you like it? I, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, well, I, would I wear it? I don't, it's like, but it's, um, it's huge. Like yeah. that is like a major brand. And they've literally like collaborated with you and like they're building, building clothing, like pretty much inspired by you and your life and, and so yeah. forth, which is like, it's pretty insane. I, I'm keen to understand like how much involvement you had in that. And I guess the exposure that that's going to bring to their brand as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jagged have been amazing to me, to be honest. I'll start there for sure. Is it, it's a unisex clothing or is it mainly female? Mainly intake? females. Yeah. So all male. your stuff is female. Yeah. I added in the sweatshirt, the jacket and the t-shirt. I wanted that to be unisex because I have a lot of male best friends and I just wanted to appreciate them in some oh, way. Oh, well, thank you. Cause yeah. I just said, would I wear it? Implying that I thought it was all female. All, but all then, the larger sizes are sold oh, out. Like from uh, medium uh, up. I'm sorry. Oh, so you know, are you trying to say I can't fit a small? <laughs> you can try. I don't judge. <laughs> It's been a long lockdown, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe not. Maybe that XL might come in handy. <laughs> yeah, seriously though. <laughs> um, no, but coming back to the question, like, yeah, what was your involvement in actually like one, when they called you and said, Hey, we want to do this collab. And then two, like building out that clothing and the time that took to come to fruition. Yeah. Far out. That was almost a year ago now. So I made it a part of my contract. Oh, so was that long ago? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the process for design, like even with Adidas, that was a two year process. So whatever wow. uniform you see was made two years. Wow. Before, yeah, prior, but fuck them. Um, we'll talk about Jagged. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I sat down with Kaylee, the head designer, and I made a mood board for yeah. three different things. So I was like street track, like racing, because I made the racing, we made, we made the racing kit. Yeah. And then um, performance as well. So training clothes and um, had that. Came up with some sketches. I ga gave her my favorite colors. We reviewed all the sketches. We changed a lot. Oh, not a lot. A few things, just minor tweaks. But to me, it's like a lot because it. I just need it perfect. In, like whatever I'm seeing in my head, I need to see on paper. Yeah. And um, yeah, then we. She sent it off to the manufacturers. They came back with samples, and that was like the best day of my life. I was wow. just like, yeah, we've nailed it. Let's just add a bit more orange, and off we go. Like, wow. So you had like that much. Well, I assume you'd have influence, but you had that much influence. Yeah. To be like, no, let's let's touch this up. Let's do that, and they would accommodate. Yeah, that. yeah. And I think that's the funniest part is like <laughs> there were so many people. They're like, oh no, they just put her name on it. You know, you hear all that. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I'm I, like, I, yeah. I, I totally understand that people would think that. But I'm like, no, I study this. Like, this yeah. is what I want to do when I'm older. Of course, I'm going to immerse myself because it's such an important part of my life and it's something I love doing. Yeah. I would love, and Kaylee is so good. She shares the same brain as me. I just want to learn as even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and then the range came out and it was a huge success on its first day and we've got a second drop coming, I think, in a few days. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, it's just like. It's nice because I feel like I've found my calling mm. and I'm hoping this can now, like, I'd love to see Team Jagged. My next one, I did say, yep, 
we need to bring a men's range in as well because all my guy <laughs> friends are just like, where the fuck is it? <laughs> yeah, at? no shit. It's coming. It's just like, it's such a process. And like, we're starting a year out and a lot can change in a year, right? Correct. So it's just, you know, you've got to get the right market. You've got to get everyone interested and that's how you build from there. Um, so yeah, and I just, I would like to collaborate with more, I guess, well, just with different brands, right? Like I think Jagged would do really well teeing up with more male dominant brands like Earl's Collection or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. That actually invites males in and they're like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, gets they a do know what they're. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about where they're going to head. Um, and yeah, I just want to keep doing it pretty much. So is like the feeling for you after like, so you said it was a year ago and being a part of the, the design process and then seeing that come to fruition, is that like as fulfilling as you as like winning a race in a sense? A million percent, if not like, better. Really? Yeah, wow. Because yeah. I, I can imagine the amount of time and effort you put into that would be similar to yeah. the track in some regards, right? But yeah. just people don't acknowledge that. And I think it's even more stressful because you need people to buy it. I don't need people to buy into my athletic yeah, career. Yeah, that's like, true. That's, just all, that's, that's true. just all about me and my team. Whereas this, I'm like, fuck, if people don't like this, they're going to be brutally honest. And for me, I saw the, I saw all the samples back in March and I was kind of over it. Yeah. Like, oh, I, when I first saw it, I'm like, this is the best. I was like, okay, let's hurry up. And then I saw all my friends in it and all the models in it. And I was like, this is the best. Like everyone's happy. Wow. Everyone's like vibing off of my stuff. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's the best feeling for it's me. It's blowing up. Like it literally <laughs> is, isn't it? Like every like celeb in Australia is just like put up some sort of image yeah. with like the clothing and yeah. it's, it's a huge brand. So congrats to yeah, you. Cause that's, that's actually you. amazing. Um, I've always been kind of, because of the amount of stuff you do and uh, you've touched on design and that you found your calling in, in some regards, which is quite amazing considering you're still a uh, you know, professional athlete, but do you have a vision for like who you want to be outside of the track? Like, is that, is that really clear to you? Cause I feel like you've got your hands in so many like baskets yeah. right now that it's hard to narrow down maybe a pathway or, you know, are you, you kind of like the, the craziness of, of everything that goes on around you? Yeah. It's funny. I have moments cause I just don't know. I still don't know where I know. I, I definitely want to be within the fas world of fashion, but I also want to try and get into TV as well. Oh, really? So that's like, like my acting? next, I don't know. Like I, I wanted to start off in Oz just presenting like the weather. I think I've said this a million times to people. No way. Yes. I just said that we, I'm going to say we need a sister on the news, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, of all these for mainstream channels, I mean? I've never seen a black person. See what present. I mean? Just saying, How people. How embarrassing is it though? Like, yeah, I mean, if I want to watch, we'll see how else go to the ABC. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That, maybe you can break the mold. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do, and that's why I want to do it. Is just to break the mold, to open up the floodgates for other people, other minorities, and then yeah. I want to move on into you know maybe more acting. I'm not sure yet because I think that's a very different world. Yeah, you know so. I'm a bit like, I feel like I'd need to actually pack up and move to America and really yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's definitely on the cards. Like, why not? I've yeah. always said I wanted to be in a Disney movie and I'm still trying to like push for that. Wow, you have like really big goals, don't you? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. love that. That's so cool. <laughs> but it's like, once I'm done, I honestly just want to move to Spain, live in the hills, selling orange juice by the beach. Yeah, we had this, it. this was like one of the famous quotes of our, um, our last chat is you were, you were speaking about you would be happy in Barcelona yeah. selling orange juice and like driving around in a juice cart and yeah. you'd be content. A hundred percent. That's where I want to finish. <laughs> Off still... social media. No one knows who I am. Just buy my orange juice. Yeah. That's Cause you I love the about. Spanish culture and language, don't you? I love it. Are, yeah. you, are you fluent or are you still Getting learning? Getting there. Class starts this Thursday. Wow. Yeah. So I've signed up to a Sydney university course. I was trying to look for Harvard just to have something to do. But like I went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> language of the arts is like a hundred K a year. Yeah, or okay. Yeah. You know, I can, I can do this on Google. If I yeah. Want yeah. Who knows? You could probably get an ambassadorship of Harvard or something the way you work. <laughs> <That'd> <laughs> <be> <laughs> <so> <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, yeah, I'd love to do something. I'd love to work in Spain at, you know, I don't know where or doing what other than selling orange juice, mm. but that's definitely on the cards is to kind of break into that. Like, have you seen Elite? The TV show or no. Money Heist? Oh yeah, I've seen Money Heist. Yeah. Become fluent in Spanish. So you can be on that. That would be so sick. Honestly, man, Morgan Mitchell shoots for the stars, not the moon, the fucking stars, <laughs> man. Um, so you, you, I just want to go, kind of round this out and go back to, I guess, your, your current profession, you could say, as, as an athlete. You mentioned you do want to go to Paris. Yeah. Is that, do you have like a clear vision of when you want to stop and transition into the Morgan Mitchell mm. outside of the track? Or is it still like you're going to just go as long as you can? I think just keep going until I feel like I've exhausted it really. Like mm. there's so, there's so much more I want to do in the 800. Um, and I'll just keep going until my body, until my body says it's enough. But 
yeah, for me, it's like Paris would be great. I'll be 29, turning 30 after Paris. So I'll be 29 at the Olympics. And then, you know, some people don't retire until they're about 35. So that's exciting to me because I have at least another eight years. Yeah. You know, it's already been eight or nine now. Mm. Um, yeah, I just don't really put a timer on it. Like, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. So, so when will you start, like, mentally, physically, really sort of looking at Paris seriously? Uh, I've pretty much, once I get back to running, all eyes are on Paris because I said to my, we literally had this conversation two days ago. I came back and I said, look, we were chasing our tails, trying to make an Olympic team and I embarrassed myself. Grateful mm. to have made it, but I'm not doing that again on the world stage. So because we've made world champs and com games a few times now, they're on next year. But if I don't qualify, that's fine. Let's just get my body as strong as it can possibly get, get the Achilles right. And we'll just keep getting fitter and fitter and fitter for Paris because I feel like taking a year off, whether I compete or not, is a different story. But if I'm just rehabbing this whole year, getting fit and strong, then it puts me in good stead for world champs next year. Yeah. Oh, sorry, in 2023. And then that obviously puts me in good stead for Paris. So it's kind of like I'm starting now to make sure by the time I get to Paris, nothing gets in my way. Wow. So that's the little plan we've got. So you start, it's, you start far out then. This is what yeah. I'm talking about. Like yeah. coming off the, the sort of high or the down, however you want to frame Tokyo, like the amount of time and effort you give to these events. Yeah. It doesn't get enough like credit, I don't yeah. think, for, from <laughs> media or people in this country. But no. um, I just want to thank you, Morgan Mitchell, for coming on the show. Honestly, I feel like we all, everyone in this room and our producer, we all need to get a dream journal or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I should start selling them. Like, How funny. Oh my God. Yes, you should. <laughs> Seriously, just write. And then, like the slogan should be just write outlandish shit <laughs> and watch it come true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly. Um, no, honestly, very inspiring to talk to you. You're a good friend and like I'm very proud to see how you've bounced back from Tokyo and the, the mindset you're in and like God knows who you're going to partner with or what you're going to do next. But I feel like <laughs> the sky you. is the limit for you. So good work. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. <laughs>